World Line Zero, an exotic that I feel like most people don't even know about. This is an exotic sword that dropped way back in year one with the release of Warmind, and it recently got a new buff alongside the launch of Season the Deep. Now before, its exotic perk Tesseract stated, for its heavy attack, use while sprinting with full energy to launch a heavy blink attack. Now it was not a complicated perk, as it worked exactly as it described. When holding the sword, you could activate a teleporting heavy attack once you've been sprinting for one second. And you can see there at the bottom left, guys, of your screen, you would get that temporal sprint buff propped. Now with its catalyst, that sprint timer was brought down to half a second. Now this weapon was really fun in the sense that you could use it with something like Shadow Knight to skate around everywhere. But in terms of actual performance, in comparison to other swords, it was quite mid. Most of the other swords throughout its lifetime, like things like Fallen Guillotine, Lament, completely outclassed it. And in PvE, it became known as one of the most painfully average swords of all time. Other than having some use in the speedrunning community, this sword was just never part of the meta. Finally though, Bungie actually took notice and buffed Roll Line Zero alongside the launch of Season the Deep. In the patch notes for update 7.1.0, it stated that Roll Line Zero's spinning teleport slash now costs 50% energy, down from 100%, and it could be chained into itself once when used on the ground. Now this is actually reflected in the updated text for Tesseract within the game, where it states, press again after the strike to blink a second time. Now this works exactly how it sounds within the game. Once you sprint and use the first teleporting heavy attack, you can then reactivate it again to do a second one. Each of these will use about 50% of the heavy attack gauge, and once you activate either one or both of them, you have to wait for that gauge to essentially fully recharge before being able to proc temporal sprint again. Now this means you won't be able to sprint and proc temporal sprint again if you wait too long after even just one. You have to wait until that sword energy is full again. So after seeing you can get a whole entire second heavy attack essentially for free you're probably thinking okay cross that's cool and they probably lowered its damage to balance it knowing bungie actually they didn't the second notes about roll line zero in the patch notes for update 7.1 states that its damage from an individual heavy attack was increased by 8.3 percent so not only did roll line essentially double its heavy attack damage output by gaining that second heavy attack but it also gained an extra 8.3 percent of damage so how did these buffs affect World Line's effectiveness in comparison to other swords in our arsenal. Well, to start off, let's make it very clear that World Line Zero's role in the sandbox is to be a burst DPS weapon. Like, obviously, if you look at it in terms of sustained DPS, it's not good, but that's not its style. Now, you can use it to clear some ads, since it comes with the park tireless blade, where sword ammo is granted for every other powered sword kill. But because this exotic heavy attack requires you to sprint for a bit to proc it, if you're going to use it for sustained damage, you would lose a lot of time. You could have just been using just to damage the boss. Where it shines, though, is in that burst DPS. When you use the two heavy attacks in succession against enemies that need that quick burst of damage to take down, like for instance against a champion, this is where you start to see it melt. Now, to test World Line Zero damage, we brought it here to Carl. And against Carl, World Line's heavy attack was hitting for 23,870 damage, five times for a total of 119,350 damage per heavy attack. When you use the second heavy attack, that damage does doubles to a whopping 238,700 damage. From the point of activation, each heavy attack takes about 0.65 seconds each, or 1.3 seconds for both, bringing your burst DPS when using both World Line Zero's heavy attack to around 183,615 damage per second. And it can even get higher if you proc one of Roll Line's other perks, Assassin's Blade, where sword final blows boost movement speed and damage. Essentially, after getting a kill with Roll Line, you'll have a around a five second interval to do 15% extra damage. Yes, this does apply to both of your charged heavies. So after getting a kill on an ad, we were hitting for a burst DPS value of a whopping 211,161. Fellas, that's nasty. To give some context, when looking at things like Lament, we can see that the full combo of a block, three line attacks and one heavy on Carl, hits for a total of 273,689 damage over the course of 2.18 seconds, giving us a burst DPS value of 125,545 damage per second. Lament will almost always be better for sustained DPS simply due to its functionality compared to something like Roll Line. But as we see here, Lament's burst DPS is actually far lower than both base Roll Line and Roll Line with Assassin's Blade. Even if you try to shorten the damage window and only do two line attacks in a heavy, you still hit for 226,944 damage around 1.85 seconds, coming out to a burst DPS value 
value of 122,672 damage per second. Now, after looking at these values, we see that Roarline's burst damage is far higher than that of Lament, which is why today we are crowning Roarline Zero. It's pretty much the best sword in the game in terms of burst DPS. Now, this trend continues when looking at things like Vortex Frames, like Fallen Guillotine, and at Carl, Fallen Guillotine's heavy attack with Jagged Edge and Impact Masterwork, a spec mod, and Ruin Blade deals 97,409 damage at base, with the first tick of damage dealing 15,839, and the other five dealing 16,314, due to Royal Line Blade being procced on that first heavy tick. The burst damage for just the heavy takes around 0.7 seconds to pull off, actually coming out to around 139,155 damage per second. It's lower than Royal Line, but actually higher than Lament, which is quite nice for a legendary sword. Still though, it's far lower than what you can get out of Royal Line Zero. But Cross, what about Rowan Blade? Fully amped. Well, guys, if you do the whole Royal Line Blade combo of 10 line attacks and then a heavy, it hits for a total of 411,168 damage. But it takes you 5.62 seconds to do all of this, bringing its DPS way down to actually 73,161 damage. People just don't know, man. Bungie absolutely destroyed Royal Wind when they nerfed it. Even if you try to do a quick combo of three line attacks and say a heavy attack with Royal Wind Blade, it still hits less for a total of 184,265 damage over 2.18 seconds with a DPS value of 84,525. Now, Guillotine's DPS gets a little higher with something like On Guard. On Guard states, quick attacks immediately after swapping to this weapon do additional damage. Guys, this is roughly a 30% damage boost to Fallen Guillotine's heavy attack, hitting for 20,590 damage six times or 123,540 damage in total. Now, if you divide this by 0.7 seconds that the heavy attack takes to use this, Guillotine's burst DPS actually goes up to around 176,485 five damage. Now this number is surprisingly high, almost to the level of roll line zero. The only thing here is that while the burst DPS is high, the total damage of 123,540 damage for one heavy attack from Fallen Guillotine with On Guard is much lower than that of two base roll line heavies at 238,700 damage, almost double that of what Guillotine can hit. Now keep in mind why we are mentioning Fallen Guillotine so much is because at one time it literally was the meta. Now, another sword that a lot of you might know from this channel is Throne Cleaver, our Yas sword. It is exclusive to the Titan class. It is an aggressive frame sword at that. And essentially, it's a great sword that you can slam with. Throne Cleaver's heavy attack is just one big slam. And at one time, it was doing a tremendous amount of damage. We had a mod called Energy Accelerant, which essentially doubled a lot of different damage types across the board, including that of the heavy attack on Throne Cleaver. Now, at base, with Jagged Edge, and a spec mod. Its heavy attack was hitting for 109,812 damage. Now, if you proc on guard, this damage does shoot up to 142,756 damage. And while this is a lot of damage for an instant damage source, it has the same problem that Fallen Guillotine has, where it can put out good burst damage with on guard, but Roran can beat it while still having an extra 100,000 total damage. And look, as someone who has been rocking these swords pretty much religiously since the beginning, it blows my mind how much stronger Royal Line Zero has become. Now, after looking at all these damage values, it's clear to see that Royal Line has essentially the best burst damage out of everything. Even beating out Lament, who was the king of swords for such a long time, pales in comparison to some of the quick numbers you could put out with Royal Line. Keep in mind, guys, that reprocking Temporal Sprint is too much of a hassle to make Royal Line super viable in any sustained DPS scenario. So Lament does still beat it out there. But anything that has like a short time frame of DPS where you can proc Temporal Sprint, or perhaps you're just trying to take down a champion, Royal Line is the sword to use. Now, how does Royal Line compare to some other good sources of burst DPS? You've got things like Fourth Horseman with the Catalyst, known for having some of the best DPS in the game. This shotgun actually comes out if you land all five shots to a DPS value of 379,680, clearly far higher than that of Royal Line. An Apex Predator with impact casing, reconstruction, bait and switch, and a spec mod could shoot two rockets back to back with the second one benefiting from bait and switch, dealing 292,782 damage over 1.18 seconds for a burst DPS value of 248,120. Parasite, with its max 20 stacks built up, will instantly 
only do 374,361 damage. Now, after seeing these values, there are a few conclusions we can make about Worldline. The first one is that Worldline is actually surprisingly a good option, at least among sorts. Lumen has better potential for sustained DPS, but it's flat out obliterated in the burst DPS department by Worldline. If you're running an arc build in something like a Nightfall or a Legend or Master Law Sector, and you need a good arc sword to chunk down any majors or champions, Worldline is a solid choice. The only thing is, is when we compare Worldline to other burst DPS kings, whether that be Fourth Horseman, Parasite, you do see it trail pretty heavily, which is why in the other day when we did our re-review of Strongholds, everything is going to come down to the rework for swords. But at the top of that list of swords that we're going to be using right after that rework goes through, Worldline will be the first one. Now, if you're using Worldline in your build, what are some current exotic pieces that synergize? We actually have quite a few. We've got Mask of Backers on Hunters. After it's chained and seed in the deep, you'll now get a 25% boost to your arc weapons after using your dodge. Now, keep in mind, this does not stack with surges, but it's very easy to proc. Essentially, just giving you a free 25% damage buff to your world line on demand. For Warlocks, you can run things like Fallen Sunstar, where Ionic Traces you create move faster and grant you additional ability energy. And if you're running an arc build, you have Sunstar here to play into your ability toolkit while clearing ads with Tireless Blade on world line. And for Titans, Eternal Warrior is actually a decent option. I know, we haven't even re-reviewed it, but it got a buff in Season the Deep, now stating that Arc Final Blows grant an escalating damage bonus to Arc Weapons. This too is a 25% buff, but again, it does not stack with Surge Mods. But this leads us to the exotic that we reviewed the other day, that being Strongholds. Bungie actually fixed this exotic and its performance. In the most recent patch notes, 7.1.5, Bungie states that they fixed an issue where the Stronghold exotic gauntlets were not properly extending the duration of restoration based on the number of shots blocked and causing it to grant restoration on dealing damage with any sword. Now applies restoration after blocking damage immediately after a swing and extends its duration based on the number of enemy attacks blocked. Now we mentioned that this is still somewhat of a niche exotic, but being able to get that restoration after blocking an attack definitely helps you stay alive. And in my opinion, a lot more consistently than what it used to before. And this will allow you to utilize Worldline even in in-game content. And keep in mind guys, blocking with strongholds do not consume sword energy. It also gives you a substantial amount of damage resist. You can proc that restoration times two when you hit another enemy, giving you even more survivability. And you can still utilize arc surge mods with all of this. Again, we mentioned Eternal Warrior and even things like Mask of Backers, but surge mods don't even stack with those buffs. Here though, you can still use strongholds. You can still use surge mods. You can still get a good damage bonus, although not 25%, but close. If you are rocking three surge mods, there is a play to be made here. So guys, that is our re-review of World Line Zero. I know in our review the other day for Strongholds, we briefly touched on World Line Zero, but this was a sword I never expected Bungie to pick up. The question that remains is what in the world is Bungie planning on doing with swords when they finally rework them, which I believe is going to be next season, which is not that far away. Let me know in the comments below, guys, what you think. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching, and as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.